Well, today is October 24th, 2014, and I'm very happy to have as our guest today Lois Springsteen. And Lois, you're a veteran around here at MCC. Uh, talk to us about yourself. First of all, um, where are you from and when did you come to MCC? I am from Sheridan. Okay. I am so from Sheridan that I was born in Sheridan. Oh, my. And okay. I lived you most of my life there. Truly are a local native. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Truly a you know, local native. Yep. Uh, and how did I happen to come to MCC? Well, I had worked for the, the public schools for uh, several years. And uh, when I took maternity leave, um, that opened the door for leaving that position and and applying at MCC because MCC was new okay. and I was so thrilled when it was uh, became a reality because I knew just how wonderful education is and how important it is and um, the opportunity came for me to apply here I I hired in as the secretary to uh, Cliff Bador. Okay, what, year, Bador. Was, what year was that? He was, he was a business manager okay. at that time, 1968. Oh, 68, okay. And uh, so I hired him as a business secretary, and you don't work in a college without realizing quite quickly the, all of the values of education. Right, right. And you were at Central Montcalm Public Schools? Yes. Prior to this, yes, okay. Yes. So when you came in 68, Don Fink was the president? Yes. Okay. Uh, but you worked for uh, Cliff Bedore. And then Cliff became president, when, in 72, was it? About 71 that. interim? About and that, yes, president I think 72. so. Yes, okay. I think, I think uh, Dr. Frankery was uh, left at that time, 71. So when you came, what buildings were already located here on campus? Well, the, the administrative building uh, combined with the library. Okay. And the, what we called um, Instruction East and, and Instruction West. Okay. If I have that right. Mm -hmm. And they were in the process of, actually, they were in the process of building Instruction West. West, okay. think, Yes. And they also had the Volk Tech buildings, where they were teaching automotive classes and similar classes to that. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that was pretty much it. Pretty much it at yeah. that point yeah. in time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So when you came, um, what, what was it like here? What was the what was the atmosphere like on campus? I think it was exciting. I mean, at least I was excited. Okay. <laughs> and um, we, the student body was fairly small. I don't have any idea what the numbers were, but they were all happy to be here and happy for the opportunity to to get into higher education. Mm -hmm. This close been, to home. Okay, you would have been here during one of the first commencements or during some of the early commencements. Yeah, well, I was here for the, um, actually I didn't participate, but I was here when they had the first commencement, the, the nurses' comm commencement. At the church? Yeah. Okay, in Greenville. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And the first ones that were here on campus, I understand, were in the atrium, uh, some in north, and then later in the activities yes. building. Yes. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, good. Yes. Uh, were you here when they broke ground for the campus, when Governor Romney was here? No, I wasn't. Okay. I wanted to be here, but uh, at that time I had a, a baby, a young okay, child, sure. and yeah. uh, couldn't get away. But I was so supportive of the concept and uh, the fact that we were having it located so well in the county so that so many people had, advan had the advantage of getting here without a long distance sure. travel. Yeah. Okay, very good. So talk to us about what the, what Don Fink was like and what Cliff DeBoer were like. What kind of men were they to lead our campus uh, back at that time period? I guess they were totally different. Okay, all right. <laughs> in fact, uh, all four of the first presidents, I worked for all four of them. Mm -hmm. They were all different, but um, uh, Don was, um, let's see, how do I describe Don? He was. He was a very professional uh, administrator. He he was trained for that. That was his goal, and, and uh, he was he had high goals for the college. Um, and as I go back and remember Cliff, he was a businessman. Okay. He was yeah. a strong businessman, and he was he was very concerned and interested in the 
financial well-being of the college, okay. which was important. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you worked for four. You worked for uh, at Don Don Fink and Cliff the Door, and then Herb Stoutenberg, and then of course Don Burns. Yeah. If you had to select, this might be a hard question, but give us some thought. If you had to select a word or a phrase that that you would think epitomized the era of each of those four here. Uh, like, for example, I'm guessing that in the Don Burns era, with which I am most familiar before mm -hmm. Bob Tarantino came, campus expansion and outreach to the community would certainly be a part of what I would think mm -hmm. would be a way to describe what went on during the Burns era. Uh, if, you, if you had to define in a few words those earlier eras, what, what might come to mind? Well, some of the programs, I'm thinking that when Don Fink was here, uh, he, he wanted um, to be a classy, professional institution. Okay. And um, they, he, I think, I give him credit for inspiring critical issues. That was uh, something, it was just sure. a, a burst of knowledge. Yeah. And, uh, to get people thinking and, and applying themselves and personal growth. Uh, and, I, and, and Cliff was a, a common man. He, he, as I said, he was a businessman and he wasn't as, um, I don't know, kind of floundering for words. Uh, oh, that's okay. It's kind of hard to describe them, okay, actually, yeah, be, but sure. because they all were very special to this college. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. Uh, you mentioned some of the extra uh, kinds of lectures and programs that they had. I understand that Art Linkletter was here at one point, and George Goble. Were you a part of any of those uh, events when those individuals came? That was early okay. in, my, in my working closely with, uh, in the president's office. Sure, okay. I think they came actually before I started working in the president's office. Oh, okay. But uh, um, I'm just kind of drawing a blank there. Okay. You can tell. <laughs> so you were here how many how many years then, grand total? Eighteen. You were here eighteen years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, overlapping four presidents, and you your office was located down here. We're down in the library right now in the admin building. This uh -huh. used to be yes. the administrative suite yes. or the floor. Yes. Yes. the library on top. So yes, okay, this is where we came in, yeah. as in a, the main entrance. Okay. And uh, I had multiple offices, actually. <laughs> My first desk was at the switchboard. Okay. And that's where I handled all the uh, incoming monies, and uh, that uh, grew to, well, actually, from that office, I went to the president's office as the executive secretary, hmm. and that was down in the same area. Um, and uh, I think that was probably a couple of years after I had started working here. And um, as I said, after I got, got started working here, then I realized the importance of higher education because I graduated from high school one year. I married my husband of 67 years. Mm, <laughs> the next yeah. year, uh, because he was uh, just out of the military, sure. and um, at that point in my life, uh, being a mother was more important to me. And, Absolutely. And I just felt that someday I would go to college, someday. Wow. Well, that happened when I was 40. And, uh, Very good. Yeah, and I started, I started when I was at the receptionist desk started taking classes. My first class was shorthand with Helen Brim. <laughs> yeah, that's shorthand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then that is what took me to the executive office. And uh, then at one time, I, they had a, a temporary office built in this reception area. Okay, yeah. And uh, I, I don't know how long a period of time that was, but then I moved into the office that had been the had been the business manager's office, hmm. and that's where I was 
for my rest of my years. So you wore many roles, and you had many roles uh, I did. during the time that you I were did. here. Yeah. Didn't you also write articles for the school, for the newspaper? Oh, yes. you, you wrote a lot of the yeah. news articles. You were kind of the communications I, person. I started the Keeping Posted. You did? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about that? Yeah. And uh, yes, I had multiple roles. I was uh, became, uh, well, the, I hired in as a business secretary, became executive se secretary, became administrative assistant to the president and the uh, director of personnel, hmm. the director of public information. Wow. And I was the official secretary to the board of trustees. Wow. And not all at the same time, but probably all most at the same, at the same time. time. All at the same time? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. but, but see, we were a much smaller institution then. Okay, sure. And I had the help of a couple of very, very helpful people that could I might have had the title, but they did a lot of I, work I for me. I understand how that goes. <laughs> so, uh, you know, kind of give us an idea. How many would you remember would have been on the staff when you started, and how many were on the staff when you retired? Faculty and office personnel? Sure. I'm going to guess 15 to 20. <laughs> that may be when you started. When okay. I started. Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that may be too low. but. Uh, since we first talked uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was kind of like a challenge to try to remember oh, sure. names that, went with yeah. <laughs> that were here when I came. And uh, there were so many people that were so welcoming and made, made, the, made the job interesting and much easier because of the camaraderie sure. with, the, with sure. the staff here. So when you retired, how many would you say would have been a part of the oh. school family at that point? Staff? I have no idea. Okay. I have no idea. Quite, quite a I, I lied because I remember signing payroll for a long time. <laughs> you did that, yes. Bless your heart. Yeah, very good. So the building that we're in now, uh, was this where the bookstore was also at one time? The bookstore was upstairs where the administrative offices are now. Okay, all right. And the uh, was the cafeteria in here at one point, the cafe before the student services? Uh, yes, it okay. was down at the end student until activities. we got the, the, the other building where we have all the activities and things. Um, and was this called the administration building yes, back then? It yes. was. It was always called and that. I have to tell you a little humor about this. Yeah, because, please. Because the offices were downstairs, and the library was upstairs, when people drove into the campus, that they would foresee the doors or the front of the uh, library, which was not actually a main entrance to the library, oh, because yeah. that was at the back where the, where the atrium is. Yeah, okay. And uh, ever so often, someone would come and knock on that door, service door upstairs, and John would, John Carlson, <laughs> or whoever was working there, would come and explain to them that, no, the administration offices were go back down the stairs and around the building and down to the end and the end. <laughs> okay, good. And John was the librarian. He was the librarian, yes, I think I just yes. saw him last week at the uh, yes, luncheon. That yes, yes. Yeah, he could give wonderful. you a lot of information because he was here early on. Okay. Very early on. Yeah, very good. You mentioned the atrium, so the atrium would have been outside in the courtyard. Yes. And at first it would have been a grassy area, and then later I guess they put bricks uh, uh, into the atrium, mm -hmm. and from that we get the uh, the Centurion's name. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you, you were here when they had sports teams. Yes. So you saw, would you go to the, to the basketball games or baseball I must games? Have. Okay, cross, <laughs> I must cross have. country. At least I was here when they were practicing. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. And there were girls' teams also, correct? Not just for our city boys. I think there were. Okay. I don't remember that, but mm -hmm. I think there probably were. Okay. I just remember the boys' basketball, and especially. Okay. And music, of course, with Ken yeah. Smith and oh, the choir yes. and so forth. Oh, yes. what, what events may stick out in your mind as having been significant during your years here? Anything come to mind uh, that would have been uh, kind of a special event? There were, there were multiple, multiple, multiple. Um, uh, I know that critical issues was important, and uh, um, Maureen Burns started a program called the Women's Festival. Talk to us about that. Well, it was designed for things that would be of interest to women, to draw them on campus, to generate you know, interest in the college and things that are available, but mostly it was things that they would uh, enjoy doing. Uh, it was. Um, it was a variety of things. and. Uh, Right now, I'm drawing a blank there, but I remember we did. We had we had good speakers, and uh, she worked very, very earnestly uh, to make sure that we had programs 
of interest and um, there was just a, a big variety of people that came in and spoke and, and it would be people that could um, generate enthusiasm for doing more themselves, learning more themselves. Now, was that when Don was president or before when, he was, before a, Don was president. when he was a counselor or mm -hmm. when he was mm -hmm. the VP and the mm -hmm. dean of students? Yeah. Okay. Huh. He might have been dean of students at that time. How long did that last? I think about eight years. About eight years, I mean, okay. I'm not sure about that either. Mm -hmm. But yeah. she was very dedicated to that cause and, and had the help of some uh, other very dedicated women from the Greenville area and around the county. Sure, excellent. What year did you retire? Uh, let's see. I came in '68. Add 18 to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to give you. A so you would have been here then during the uh, during the 10th year anniversary. Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, would mm -hmm. you been here for the uh, 25th? preparation for the 25th? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know that we have some students who did a um, time capsule yes. of that. Were you aware of that time capsule? I'm aware of that. Were yeah. you a part of that in any way? I think I did contribute some things that went into that capsule. Okay. Yeah. And I guess from Jim Lance, the time capsule was kept downstairs here in what they called the vault. vault. And the vault was, a, what, a room that was yes. locked at all times? Yes, so. that vault was designed, when the building was designed, to house uh, the records and money and things like that that we needed to keep secure. Okay. And when we computerized, they had to have a, a, a room where the main... I don't mm. know what it's called. Yeah, Main okay. unit sure. the, um, was uh, was kept it would be you know positively dry and secure, mm -hmm. so we don't, we don't want to get in and do any damage. Um, so that took over the vault, and the, some of the things that were in the vault were less important than. Okay, sure. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. but um, everything was secure. But that was. I couldn't understand how we could do that because that's where I kept all of the, the, <laughs> the trusty records. <laughs> good point, good point. So I think I continued to do that too. I think we were able to keep the minutes, all the past minutes. Oh yeah, good, there. and I've used those, yeah. uh, in fact, several of us have used those in you know, amassing the historical uh -huh. record of the yeah. institution. So uh, you mentioned computers. Earl Christensen, I guess, was the one who brought it the was. computerization to yes, the campus. How, how, did that, uh, how did that occur? I don't know. Okay. I don't know, but I know that those computers were a lot different than the flat screens that we have today. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. They were huge. They were yeah. monsters. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. And I know he, I think, developed that department and uh, launched uh, MCC into the computer era, as it were. Yeah. And also was had a heavy hand with the uh, the village. Uh, yes. It was instrumental in, in giving yes. us uh, access to the town hall and, uh -huh. of course, the store yeah. that's there as well. So we're yeah. very thankful for yeah. his contributions to that. Uh, so you were not here during the 25th, but you were preparing for the 25th. Mm -hmm. You helped get ready for that mm -hmm. anniversary. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, we're looking to celebrate the 50th, yes. and are actually in the academic year when it's the hard when to that's believe, occurring. It's wonderful. Hard, hard <laughs> it to believe. It is wonderful. So looking back over the long course of MCC history, and I know that we share a lot of appreciation for the values and the vision and the mission of our school. Um, and, any thoughts that come to mind in terms of uh, uh, the power that the school has had in the county and what contributions you have seen it make in, in different ways? Well, I know there are a lot of people that have come to Montcalm Community College at, out of high school that would not have had that opportunity if they had to go to a university mm -hmm. because it's not a wealthy county. And um, this was um, a wonderful start and this was, and that was encouraged. Um, and I kind of uh, credit Don Fink with that too, because he was promoting it, and it was it was as a as a stepping stone to a university, and um, then the other part of that, the flip side of that, is for the adult student. Many women, you know, like I, mm -hmm. uh, had chosen to be married and become a mother and and have their home, raise their children, and. Uh, didn't have much hope of going on to college until we had Montcalm Community College. Sure. Yeah. And I know many people, adult women, who came here and that was the first step of getting, right. that getting their 
an associate's degree and going on or going and then going on to getting a baccalaureate and a master's and and uh, and that's been that's been because it was so it was so personal to me. That's one a, a biggie with this college. So many people and there were are people uh, when the Chrysler plant closed and I only they, they were they brought in programs to help get those adults in a field that they can and it could enrich and prepare themselves to go on and get a different job hmm. Very good. Uh, and what about other of the staff or faculty that come to mind you mentioned John of course who was the librarian mm -hmm. yes. here uh, what other staff or faculty uh, names come to mind that had a, a major role in those uh, formative years of MCC? Well, the very first name that comes to mind is Les Morford. He okay. was the first instructor yes. hired here, yes. and he did so much. Um, he had a program, a, a, I think it might have been a credit class, but I'm not positive of that, but where he taught how to study. <coughs> How to prepare and how to how to how to best study and learn. Very good. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw Lester yeah. Lady says hi to you. By the way. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> oh, he's such a dear person. He is. He, he is, is such a dear person. Um, our John Carlson was one of the first people that came to came down and, and said, "Welcome, welcome yeah. aboard." That's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that meant a lot. I can see him doing that. Yes, yes. Um, the nursing instructors, uh, but of course, Les was the very first. Um, he's, he's just Mr. Malcolm Community College sure. in my book. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Of course, Jess Fox, I know yes, you've been here when you yes, were here. Yes. You mentioned Ken Smith already. Uh, yes. Been here. And, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of the old guard who are still here. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of the retired folks still attend our retirement luncheons and mm -hmm. are still very active, which I think is a tribute to the school. You know, in some some contexts, you retire and you go away and never to come back. Oh. But so many continue to yeah. come back and reflect and enjoy fellowship, yeah. and that speaks well for the institution. Yeah. The uh, officials, Frank mm. and yeah. Alpha, sure, they were uh, important to the to the college and uh, getting the their programs going mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. uh, speaking of programs we joked with Don Burns yesterday about the day on the grass were you here yes, to make the day on the yes. grass no, I, I, you know I don't remember anything about it actually. okay all right um, I must have been busy doing something else <laughs> you must have been during the Bedore <laughs> era I understand yeah. so you probably yeah. were kept quite busy during that yes time. Yeah. Uh, what else comes to mind uh, anything that you think would be of significant interest to those who who listen uh, or those who read what we talk about today uh, from your perspective looking over the history of the college oh well, we haven't mentioned the barn theater all right good yes talk about that for us please um well it was the barn on the anderson farm which yes. was, the, was the was the campus it became the campus um and I, I'm not going to try to get all the names because I will either omit somebody or get somebody wrong. Sure, but yeah. it was um, it was just developed from the barn, and uh, they had uh, a variety of plays, musicals. We had some very uncomfortable seats. <laughs> <laughs> and that, now. they have been yeah they have been replaced, and uh, and that was a nice opportunity too. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's still going strong, but unfortunately, the structure right now is is getting quite uh, you know hard to maintain. Yeah. So we don't know what the future of that barn will be. Yeah. So by the time some folks watch this video, it might uh, uh -huh. it might be gone at that uh -huh. point in time. Uh -huh. But yeah, so yeah. a wonderful hallmark of the early years uh -huh. of the school, and it served us well as a theater. Yes, so and it just you know was kind of kind of part of the landmark yeah. of of the Anderson Farm. Sure. We have plays there, of course, and, yes. and musicals, and music yes. concerts, and yeah. recitals, and, and all those the good things. The play I remember is a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Oh, yeah, they still do that. Yes, yeah, they still and do I had a role in that. You did? <laughs> that was my one and only. What did you do? What role were you? Um, What was her name? She was the, uh, was the mother. Okay. So you were in you were in acting. Good for you. Well, you were in drama. <laughs> I did that in high school. Yeah. I, 
I don't know how it got me into this, but anyway, I did it and I enjoyed it. Good. And I uh, was thankful for the opportunity. Good, good for you. <laughs> Any other parting thoughts that you have for us today or reflections as you think back? Well, I hope, and I know you will, keep up all this good work because uh, this is just such a vital part of Montcalm County. Mm -hmm. The young people, the older people, and there's just so much to offer here. You, you just, you're going to find something you like here. <laughs> um, and I'm so appreciative. The things that I started back in my day uh, have grown and multiplied mm -hmm. and just continue to be. I'm just so proud of this college. Good. Yeah, and I am too. And I've only been here for a few years in my seventh year. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just feel very honored and blessed to be a part of it. Came when before Don retired, Don uh -huh. Burns, yeah. and was here when Bob Ferentino came on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I agree with you that every president seems to have had uh, his very unique mark, mm -hmm. uh, his own personality, his own style of leadership, mm -hmm. and uh, and seemed to be just exactly what the school needed at that time. Yeah. So uh, a wonderful development and evolution over the years, mm -hmm. uh, from leadership mm -hmm. to leadership, and with the, yeah. the wonderful staff that we have here in fact yeah. that we have. So it's, it's been good for us. Yeah. And the growth from the foundation, that's been absolutely wonderful. Yes, that's right. Yeah, of, that of, of my former presidents, I know that I know that Cliff Bedore was so interested in getting funds available mm -hmm. for students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. Um, he w he wanted them to be able to get scholarships and be able to come, not be not be limited because they didn't have the money to come. Mm -hmm. So, and that's that's the part of the foundation that I remember most oh, that's is excellent. the scholarships. Sure, yeah. and I know that Herb Stoutenberg and of course Don Burns. Yeah. And today, Bob, feel mm -hmm. all very yes. much the same way about yes. that. Uh, yeah. uh, what, what a benefit. Yes. Uh, scholarships and so many programs that we could not afford uh -huh. with what monies we get from tuition yes. and other right. sources. So right. the foundation... And the grants. I, the grants. You know, yes. I've, I've learned so much about that just recently. But sure. Some of the... the uh, Speaking of that, did you know Stan Ash and Blanche Ash? I knew them. Okay. Uh, not well. All right. Mm -hmm. But um, because Stan was involved not only in the, on the board, not while I was serving the board, but um, uh, he was he was interested in many of the other functions that he was interested in the foundation, mm -hmm. and I think he had an interest in the Heritage Village, which. Has grown and grown and grown. It sure has. Yeah, yeah, absolutely it has. Yeah. We're proud of that yeah. as well. Well, Lois Springsteen, thank you. It's been wonderful to talk with you today. It's been my pleasure. Yeah, wonderful. Bless your heart. And I hope that you'll keep on coming back over and over again. I'm so happy to be able to do that stories. now. Wonderful. Yeah, Bless your heart. Thank yeah. you so much. It's thank been a you pleasure. for asking me. Absolutely. Yeah.